So this is how to start an IV. Um, so first you want to gather your materials. Uh, for you guys that are starting out with doing IVs, I highly recommend getting a towel because if you do make a mess, then it's easier to clean up. So I recommend having a towel. Get your alcohol pads. Get your IV start kit if you have one. Uh, then get your tubing and your IV. Okay, so let's see. Let's open up this. Open up all your material. So you have it prepared. Okay, I need to flush this. So I'm not injecting any air into the patient. So let me prime that. Okay, then I will prime this. Loosen this up. And knowing that once I get my IV in, I'm gonna be one-handed. So then when I'm gonna get this, I'm just gonna pop it off. So I unscrew it. So it just needs to be popped off. Okay. Check my IVs right here. This one I'm using a 22 gauger. You could tell by it being blue. Okay, I kind of loosen this guy up too to make it easier when I'm doing my insertion. And then I put it back. Okay, my tape. I got a Tegaderm here and I've got tape. I'll show you how to use it if you don't have, have a Tegaderm so you know how to do it both ways. So I'll just leave it on the side. Okay. One. I want it about the length of the wrist. Two. About the same length. And the third one, I'm going to do it longer. Then it's going to be my chevron. And cut that in half. Okay. In case I need more, I'm just going to leave this guy by the side right here. So I have quick access in case I need it. Okay. And I'll just loosen up my tourniquet right here. Okay. So then I've got pretty much everything ready. Now I'll go to the patient. And obviously there's been introductions and what have you. And so I'll set up under, for this example, we'll be doing it under the hand. So I'll just put the towel right under where I'm going to be inserting and all that. Now the patient might ask me or ask you, is this going to hurt? And I highly recommend not lying to the patient. You could tell them, yeah, it's going to hurt a little bit or they might feel a pinch. But afterwards, then there should be no pain. Okay. So you're going to do your assessment. Okay. Quickly look. Here, I'll see veins. Now, for some patients, uh, due to their age or they might be dehydrated, you're not going to see the veins right there. That's when I suggest then you add on your tourniquet. Okay? For this example, because we have the hand model, the vein is very prominent right there. But in case it wasn't, I would be tying my tourniquet. And all this, I'm doing this very conscientiously without any gloves. Makes it easier to tie, makes it easier for me to feel. Okay, feel the veins on the skin and what have you. And really, when you guys get proficient at IVs, it's much more of a feel rather than a visual that you're looking, because sometimes you are gonna go in blind. So, I've got the tourniquet on. Okay, that's when I'd wash my hands, I'd apply some gloves, okay? And then, 
I'd start prepping, okay? It's disinfecting the area. And even though I'm going for that vein, I'm gonna go throughout the whole hand, okay? I like to get that whole area prepped, okay? Then I've got my needle coming, okay? So I've got my needle ready, I've prepped up my extension tubing, and I've got my tape at the side. So really, I'm ready to go, okay? So now here, you've identified the vein. You want to secure it. What I mean by securing it is, some people tend to have rolly veins. So either you want to grab on that this way, stretch out the skin this way, or even have them clench up their hand so then you're using their own strength to help secure their own vein. Okay, unfortunately I can't do all that because it's the hand model. So let's pretend I'm securing it right here. Okay, bevel side up. Okay, so I wanna come at it with an angle. Okay, I don't wanna to be too direct or I don't wanna to be too going downward like that. I get it at an angle. I get in, okay. I don't know if this one's gonna show any flashback, but what you should be looking for is any flashback, any return right here, okay? And then if you do get flashback, then you wanna advance your catheter, okay? Just keep on advancing. Okay, there you go. And then you wanna occlude where that catheter is, okay? And then you pull it out, and so you're occluding it, stopping the blood from leaking out. Now this is where most newbies have a problem. They always forget to remove the tourniquet. I'm one-handed, I remove my tourniquet, okay? Next, I get my extension tubing, the one that we unscrewed. Flip that off, okay? Secure, now once it's right here, you can let go and just start screwing it in. Okay, and then you can pull back to see if you have any flashback, which in this case is not gonna happen, and then just start flushing. And when you're flushing, you're looking at the area, you're looking to see if there's any bubbling up, any redness, any swelling, or if the patient themselves are saying, oh, this hurts, I'm in pain. Okay, if that's the case, then it's no good. But since that's not happening, looks good. Okay, so your next thing, you've started this precious IV. You don't want to lose it. So your next thing is you want to secure it. Secure it with your Tegaderm. Tegaderm there. Secured. Then I'd use my other tape to do more securing. But let's say you don't have this Tegaderm. Okay. So then what you want to do is get the one tape, put it over the IV, okay? That's enough security that now I can use both hands and use my chevron, okay? Get this long piece of tape underneath, if I can manage that. Okay, and then you're gonna crisscross it. Okay, one guy goes there, the other guy goes there. Super secure. Okay, lastly, get your other piece of tape. And that's how you insert an IV. Now, Real quick, some of you guys might have a problem also when you start the insertion and you're at that point where you're gonna occlude and sometimes people occlude it or they think they're occluding it but they're not. So one of the good tricks that I could show you is you've done the insertion. This is where you wanna occlude. Some people, because they don't have a good estimate, like for me, this is about the size of two thumbnails for me. So I have a good estimate in my mind. When I put it in, 
where to occlude, where to stop that bleeding. From there, take off the tourniquet. From there, add on your extension. That's when you can screw in, and then from there, secure. Secure. Then you've got your IV. You let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.